Hey everyone, so I'm a few weeks off, but I'm here to do an update, a five year update video of this 2017 Volkswagen Golf S. Um, had it for five years, it's my mom's car, um, and it has been absolutely wonderful. Not a thing has gone wrong with it in five years. Um, very reliable car, very nice car. Um, so no problems to reports. So if you want to hear any Volkswagen disaster stories, look elsewhere. Um, so this is basically the base model in the U.S. Uh, with a six-speed torque converter automatic and a 1.8 liter uh, chain cam four-cylinder engine. It's basically a de-stroked version of the GTI's engine. It makes 170 horsepower, 199 pound-feet of torque. Um, one of the most reliable configurations of the Golf. Um, this one's got about 28,000 miles on it, um, mid-30s for MPG. You can easily, on these little 15-inch wheels, um, exceed 40 miles per gallon on the highway, very easily in fact. They are um, 195-65 R15s. Very, very practical, as I'll show you. Very easy to get a bike in here without even um, getting the wagon version. So tons of cargo room. Very comfortable, just a nice car to drive. And honestly, the interior of this is so much nicer than the Mark 8. You'll see that in a lot of reviews. Just the overall normalness of it with the controls and the quality and just a huge upgrade from the Mark 8. And sadly, we don't get the Mark 8 Golf in the US. We only get the GTI and the R versions. If you want a standard Golf, you have to get a Mark 7, and that's no bad thing when you start looking at the interior. I mean, this is all soft touch. This is all, you know, fabric material. This is all lined. You know, even the leather wrapped steering wheel and paddle shifters on the base model. This fake aluminum is actually really nice. Um, actually, if you get an SEL version of these, this is all piano black, which I think is way worse than this fake aluminum trim. You know, a little boot here, handbrake even has a boot on it. A little bit of contrast stitching going on in the seats here. Um, but yeah, it's just a really, really nice interior. Take it for a little spin. Look, normal controls and they even light up at night. What a concept, huh? Uh, ignore that miles per gallon. I just drove here. It's way higher than that normally. As you can see, that's only from four miles worth of driving. Um, but like I said, you can easily get well into the 30s, low 40s on the highway with this thing. Um, so yeah, I had nothing to report. Just regular oil changes. Hasn't been to the dealer for any warranty work. Um, you know, the six-speed is, is not a DSG. It's a regular torque converter, like I said. So it's not going to be... Um, if you're used to DSGs, it's not going to be, you know, like that. But this is one of the few compact cars that doesn't have a CVT, which is really nice when you compare it to something like that. So it is actually fairly snappy for a torque converter. It's not a total slush box. It does like to camp out in sixth gear a little bit too long and jerkily downshift into fourth, which I've mentioned in videos before, like if you're on the hill, if you're on hills. But other than that, it's really nice. And of course, on these skinny little tiny wheels, the ride quality is excellent. Handling limits are somewhat low, but you're not gonna be screaming around corners in a base golf just for comfortable, gentle commuting with the occasional bit of fun. The seats are typically, you know, German firm, but they're comfortable on long haul trips. It's excellent in the snow. Obviously, I'm used to driving all-wheel drive Audis, but you know, for front wheel drive, it's fine. Never really gets stuck anywhere. So yeah, if you need a comfortable commuter car that's practical, try to snatch one of these things up. Or at the very least, take it for a test drive. It's got Apple CarPlay. Um, which works great. Stereo's not that bad for the base setup.
And I've had a few loaner cars from the Volkswagen dealer when this was in for service, um, like that one for example. Um, I actually haven't had a 1.4 Golf. I've, had a, I've driven a few 1.4 Jettas, and the power delivery is much less linear in those. I feel like they're kind of dead below 3,000 RPM, and it's kind of lumpy feeling, just kind of laggy. You don't get any of that feeling with the 1.8. It's a lot smoother, and you still get excellent fuel mileage, so I really, really, really wish they still offered the 1.8 liter engine. It's just excellent. It's very quiet. There's Volkswagens everywhere. There's a Tiguan. Here comes another Golf. It's an Alltrack. 1.8 liter buddy. Let's not kill this woman. series from the 80s. Just a beautiful summy, summy summer, summer day to be driving around. This car replaced a 2010 Volkswagen Jetta Wolfsburg Edition, and that car was, it was really nice, it was really fun to drive, but ultimately it was kind of a piece of crap. By the time it was seven years old, it was just falling apart. Um, completely opposite ownership experience with this thing so far. Granted, it's got less miles on it, very little miles actually, um, but I foresee this kicking around, sticking with us a lot longer than seven years. And as for replacements in the Volkswagen lineup, uh, um, well, there's the Taos, which um, I'd sooner be buried in. Um, go off all track again. Um, yeah, no, I'd rather kill myself than have a Volkswagen Taos. And I believe my mother would as well. So, and then the Jetta has a horrible interior. It's not anywhere near as good as this. There's scratchy, miserable plastics everywhere. Um, I don't care if you disagree with me, it's crap. Um, so, re potential replacement. So let's say somebody in a Nissan Rogue totaled this thing tomorrow. Um, it would be replaced with a Mazda 3 or the new Honda Civic. That's pretty much your best bet for a premium experience in the compact class now that the regular Golf is out of the market. Not that it matters anyway because the Golf 8 sucks. Uh, I know the chassis is really good and it drives great, but the interior is just disgusting. And um, I know I sound a little cynical, but um, that is my personal opinion. And uh, yeah, so it's been an awesome five years with this Golf. It's a really nice car. Um, it was purchased off lease, taxes included everything for like 14 grand. So good luck finding one for that price now that the market's completely gone upside down. Um, I see these things in the dealer lots with twice the miles of this thing for like 20 grand. It's just insane for even a base ass model. Um, so I really lucked out there. Definitely going to be hanging out at this thing for a while. And um, thanks as always for sticking around. And uh, we'll conclude our little update video here as we come home. Well, actually, let's not conclude it here. Let's go home first. And we'll check and see what's going on outside in Audi land. As you can see, fairly crisp shifts from the transmission. There's an S4. Supercharged V6. Update in the S3. Um, it started throwing a check engine light for cylinder four misfire, so I bought some new coils and plugs for it. So we'll get those put in. Um, TDI is doing awesome. I've been using the S6 a little bit, so it's kind of filthy because it's been raining. 
but um, yeah. Guess we can hop outside and take a look one more time. that concludes our golf update thanks for sticking around guys this was a requested video so hopefully that was good enough and uh, we'll wrap it up there see you guys later